Hello. As part of Karasaga Cooks, I'm pleased today to show you how to make a traditional Irish soda bread. Traditionally, a soda bread in Ireland would have been eaten as part of a daily meal, part of a main meal, more than, more than a breakfast bread. And so, in the traditional recipes, you often don't see sugar. In today's world, we tend to eat a soda bread as very much part of a breakfast, and so we want it a little sweeter because we're going to be putting jam or honey or other kinds of things on it. So I'll show you that. So I'll talk through it, and, uh, and off we go. But this very much would have been a daily bread. We're going to start with flour. And so soda bread can be a combination of all-purpose white flour and whole wheat, um, sometimes half and half. Today I'm going to do more all-purpose flour than whole wheat. So I'm going to be using three cups of white all-purpose flour and I'm going to be adding to that one cup of whole wheat flour. Now soda bread is leavened, it rises because of the action of baking soda. So although in traditional and rural Ireland um, dairy was always available, so yes you would have had flour, and yes you would have had milk, you would have had butter, um, but you couldn't always count on active yeast and so we use soda and so to the flours I'm going to be adding one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. Make sure it's not baking powder, baking soda. And that's my rising agent. A teaspoon of salt. This unleavened bread needs some fat and traditionally that's butter. We're going to use a quarter cup of butter you can cut that in with forks, you can cut it in with two knives. I'm going to cut it in with my fingers. Um, I do have a pasty, br pasty brush, which works as well, but then you have to clean the brush. So either way, your fingers are getting messy. So I'm off to using my fingers, and I will just rub this, really, more than anything, into the flour mixture, along with the salt and the baking soda. I haven't added my sugar yet, so as I mentioned earlier, you could very much go forward now, no sugar, and make a more savory bread. And you use it as a bread with a main meal. You're making Irish stew. Uh, this is good for soaking up the gravy. However, we traditionally today, normally, are going to be using sugar. This is two tablespoons of sugar. Since we're breaking the mold a little bit by adding our sugar, there is nothing to stop us from going a little further. So I'm going to keep this as close to traditional as I can. Um, but if you wanted to add some chocolate, go ahead and put in some chocolate chips. If you wanted to add some walnuts, if you want to add some raisins, some currants, craisins, whatever you would like. Thinking ahead to what this might be, how you're going to use it. And so my butter is cut in. I kind of want my butter to be in pieces no bigger than say frozen peas. Okay so a fairly homogeneous mixture. We're set to go. Now I need to add the liquid. We're going to use buttermilk. So if you don't have buttermilk you still need to do something a little bit different because I need an acid to activate the baking soda. So buttermilk has that lactic acid in here, the tang that's going to make that happen. If you don't have buttermilk, go ahead and use the same amount of 2% milk, whole milk, whatever you've got. But to that milk, we're going to be using two cups. To that two cups of milk, add a tablespoon and a half of, say, lemon juice or white vinegar and let it sit for about five to ten minutes. Give it a stir and you'll see it thicken up and then you'll have that acid that will activate this. And so two cups. If you can get buttermilk, it's available everywhere and it really does add a nice tang and authenticity to the recipe. Okay, now without being panicky about it, I do want to get going here because the second the soda and the buttermilk start to react, um, we have carbon dioxide being formed. and that's the rising agent so we want the rising to happen in the oven not on the countertop so I want to go fairly quickly again without panicking get it together 80 percent 90 percent together in the bowl and then I'm going to tip this onto the countertop 
and bring it together again. I want to form it, I want to shape it, I want to avoid kneading it. Okay, so absolutely I can bring it together, but let's stay well short of anything that's called kneading. All right, where am I going to cook this? I can cook this in a cast iron pan, and I've done that, and it's lovely. I can cook this in a cast iron enameled pot like this, cast iron pot, anything that's oven safe. And so I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to put it in. I've sprayed my pot. Okay. I, this thing is going to rise and as it rises, the gases need some place to go. So it will tear at the top. And so traditionally, Irish soda bread has a cross pushed into it. And so go ahead and do that. Don't be afraid to push down relatively deeply. You can do it with the back of a wooden spoon. Mine is sticking a bit. If yours sticks, you can use some flour on top to maybe help it not stick. And I don't know if you can really see that, but I pushed it down. I'm covering this and it's going to go into 425 degree oven and it's going to go in for about 40 minutes. If I want to, in the last 10 minutes, I can take the lid off to see how it's browning and add some color. And just for now, I did one in a cast iron pot. So this is the effect. Nice and brown, you can still see the cross. And that's essentially done. And so this one I had covered with tin foil for the first 30 minutes and then taken it off at the end. This one has the lid. And that's it. Irish soda bread. Sunday morning fast. Comes together in 10 minutes. 40 minutes in the oven. I hope you love it. We do. Um.